Number one, face your fears. A lot of you have a feeling that the future's not guaranteed, you're gonna run out of money, or something's gonna happen, and so all of the work that you put into trying to retire is going to uh, not pay off, and you're gonna end up disappointed, or you're gonna end up in a bad situation. Um, I felt that way for a lot of years, and the moment that I changed my thinking, I realized that with the incremental progress that I was making, that I was getting closer and closer to, eventually I got to the place where I retired at 51. Number two, you have to understand your spending habits. There was a time when I had a boss that used to use three words to sum just about everything up. Budget, actual, variance. What's your budget, what's your actuals, and what's the variance between the two, and understanding that, that variance. And then that forced me to start thinking about my relationship with money. I used to look at success as being the person that had the nice things, or success was having a nice car, the nice clothes, or any of those things that are material that we have typically um, attributed to being successful. And I realized that those impacted my ability to save. And so once I started to understand my spending habits, my relationship with money, and really my saving tendencies, it gave me the opportunity to figure out, was that working for me? And I ask each of you, ask yourself the question, these are the things that you're doing, is it working for you? Likely, it may be working in the short term, but in the long term, are you going to end up where it is that you want to be? Um, so go and take some time and just write down a list of your spending habits, how you feel about money and, and you see money. So people with money think of money as a tool. People without money see money as being the end in and of itself, and it's just not the case. So the way that you view money is going to have a deep impact on your ability to save and get to the place that you want to be. Number three, be ready to take on some new perspectives about money. You may have grown up in a place where you never had money and think that money is always going to go away and that saving doesn't work and that bank accounts are just scams and those types of different types of conspiracies. But the fact of the matter is, is anybody with money has had to entrust in the fact that things that are tried and true are tried and true for a specific reason. But if you feel that way, they say don't, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And if you start it with the perspective that's not healthy with money or that you have fear of money or you have any of those types of fears about the banking system, the financial system, investments, because again, we all look and we know the Dow goes up, the Dow goes down. Be ready to switch gears and allow yourself the license to switch gears because even if you stick with the old paradigm, it's not gonna be perfect. So if you go to a new one, at least you're giving yourself a chance to get to where you wanna be. I think I've mentioned before that I've never had a lot of information or trust in the financial systems because it always seemed like easy come, easy go. But as I started to educate myself and my perspective shifted by speaking to people that were where I wanted to be as opposed to where I came from, I started to realize that there were a lot more opportunities out there for me to uh, hold on to that money and that the money was more protected than I thought it was and it eventually put me in the position that I'm in now. Number four, be honest about your financial situation. A lot of times we get into the habit of trying to convince ourselves that something is as opposed to actually looking at what it is. As they say, people look at things, uh, need to look at things for what they are as opposed to what they want them to be. So do that with your financial situation. If you've got a bunch of debts, then understand you have a bunch of debts. If you're bad with money, be honest with yourself. I'm bad with money, so what are the mechanisms that I could use to get myself to where I want to be? Um, if you uh, have a lot of credit card debt or if you have a lot of expensive car payments or you're just living a life that you can't afford, well, be honest with yourself because the moment that you're honest with yourself, that's the point where you can turn the corner and you can say, I want to change what I'm doing. It's liken it to a car going down the street and you get to a fork in the road. Well, you either have to go left or you go right because if you go straight, you're going to run into that brick wall at the end. It's the same thing with our finances. And so when you make that honest assessment, then you can start to measure or define where you want to go and then measure the direction that you're going in. And eventually you'll find yourself making small baby steps to where you want to go. And I'll tell you that when it comes to your world of finances and retirement and all of those different goals that you might have, it never starts big. It always looks big at the end, but if you ask anybody that's successful, they all started somewhere and it was a group of small baby steps that eventually became big steps and it becomes a big snowball. And so instead of dealing with ones and fives, 
you're dealing with tens and hundreds, and if you go from tens to hundreds, then you're dealing with hundreds and thousands, and it continues to get bigger, just like most other things in life. Number five, fill in the holes. Uh, start planning for your financial future. Set boundaries around your spending, and set up your 401k, set up your 403b, start putting money into your healthcare savings account. Start looking at life insurance or perhaps setting up a trust to save money for the future generations and to make sure that you don't find yourself in a situation where you lose everything because something happens. Set up your emergency fund, but start filling the holes. And what you'll find is once you start filling the holes, the rest of it starts to become a self-fulfilling prophecy because you'll see that money that you're filling the holes with fill the holes to the point where, okay, now I have six months of savings in an emergency fund. Now I could focus on putting money away for something else. And what's beautiful about it is that if you set your money up in that way, you'll have money in places that are more difficult to get through. And if you're like me, the more hoops that I have to jump through to get something that I want, the less I'm going to go after it because I'm going to want to get after it less, unless it's an extreme case. And so as an example, if you put money into a checking account, you can go down to the bank with your ATM card and just grab it and take it out. But if you put money into your 401k, now you have considerations to take into account. Um, early withdrawal, I have a penalty, or I have to pay taxes on my capital gains. I have to go on a website to get this money withdrawn. There's, there's just a whole host of things that you have to do. So if you start set, filling those holes and you put those things around, those hard boundaries around where it is that you have your money, then you'll find yourself in a more successful spot down the road. And eventually you just forget that you have the money there. And when you start to really look at it, you'll say, wait a minute, I only put $100 a month in here, but now I have $100,000 because that money, if invested the right way, is gonna compound over time. And money you put away today is almost always gonna be more five, 10, 15 years down the road than it is when you start. Number six, and this one sounds easy, but make conscious decisions about how you're gonna spend your money and what you're gonna do with your money. Think about what it is that you're gonna do. Generally what I do is before I make a huge financial decision, I sleep on it. So if I wanna go buy something, so for example, my new iPhone. Before I bought my new iPhone, I waited about a week before I bought it because I wanted to make sure that as I like to say, the juice was worth the squeeze. Do I wanna spend this money on a new iPhone? Do I need it? Am I gonna get the value out of it? Is it worth it to me? Because sometimes the things that we want today aren't necessarily the things that we're gonna to want tomorrow. And so we have to put ourselves in a position where we're only buying things that make sense to us, things that we want. And I, and I also think that it's really important that we focus on purchasing assets, not things. And what I mean by that is you can go out and buy clothes, but clothes lose value over time. Clothes only have a real financial value to the person that's wearing them for a limited amount of time. You may like these new Air Jordans, but they're gonna be okay until you don't like them anymore. When you, you wanna sell them, they're not gonna be worth anything. I mean, Air Jordans, I know that's a whole thing, but in general, what's gonna happen is clothes, cars, things like that are all gonna lose value. But if you go and you buy a house, for example, and you save your money for years and years and years, put some money away, buy yourself a little starter home, maybe not in the best part of town, but something that you can afford, just having a little piece of property. And I know that with the housing crisis is not necessarily realistic for everybody, but I think we should all aspire uh, to greatness and whatever greatness means. But you start putting that money away into your uh, accounts for that purpose, and then you buy that thing, then when you turn around and sell it, generally you're gonna be able to sell it for more money. And it's an asset, it's something that is going to appreciate in value over time. So maybe it's not a house, but whatever it is, try to focus on buying things that are, or buying assets that appreciate in time. Don't spend your money on things. Because I think if we go back and we look at our lives, what we'll find is, is that we nickel and dime ourselves to death. We buy little $5 things, and I know the big joke right now that the boomers use for the millennials is avocado toast to Starbucks. And while I don't subscribe to that, there is a lot of truth to it because if you look at the amount of money, two, three, four, five hundred dollars a year, well imagine if you had that two, three, four, five hundred dollars a year and you would have saved that for the last five or ten years, that's a few thousand dollars. And then you take compound interest on top of that, then that would have been even more thousands of dollars when it's time for you to retire. So while I don't think we should put ourselves in situations where 
we are just completely unhappy with what we have. I do think what we should take a look at seriously is understanding or balancing the things and the assets and making sure that we're a majority of our funds and, and that we're prioritizing the purchase of, of those assets. Number seven, trust your judgment. Most of the time when I'm talking to somebody about a problem or something that they did or something they wish they would have done different or something they wish they would have thought through, they always tell me something told me not to do it, but I did it anyway. And there's a guy named Jim Collins. He wrote the book Good to Great. And in a Fortune magazine article, he had an article that said, trust your gut. And we go around a lot and we tell ourselves, don't make impulse decisions and don't trust your gut, only focus on data and facts and all of that. But the one thing he says is that you should trust your gut. And the reason why is because that gut is made up of experience. And so when you're making financial decisions, trust your judgment. If something sounds too good to be true, folks, it normally is. Most people don't get rich overnight. Sure, there's some people that may have found success in something or they're they bought some particular stock that went up or they went and bought GameStop during the whole Reddit thing. But most people, that's not how they've generated their wealth. They generated their wealth by years and years and years of sacrifice. And so the reality is, is people that lose a lot generally knew they were screwing up in the beginning. So just trust your judgment and try to make good decisions. And as you make these decisions, stay engaged in the process. Uh, because information changes. I think one of the biggest challenges people have sometimes is they'll get information in the beginning of something, but what they won't do is they won't allow that information to change or their idea to change as the information changes. And so because you have a set of facts today, that doesn't mean that that set of facts is static. It may be that they're static today, but they're going to be dynamic down the road because guess what? Circumstances change. The way that I'm invested today and the way that I was invested five years ago is different because the circumstances changes. We're in a different place in different times. So allow yourself that, but trust your judgment because I think you'll know a lot more than you think you do. Number eight, be open to opportunities that move you forward. Uh, there's a lot of times we get stuck. As people, as human beings, we're creatures of habit. And so things that have always worked, we tend to stick with, even when they start to not work. It's almost like when you play a slot machine. There's people that'll play a slot machine and they'll win, they'll have a hot machine. Well, a hot machine always goes cold, but some people will stay on that same machine thinking, well, no, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna continue to be hot because it's not gonna change. But the reality is things are changing. So you have to understand that you have to be able to, as I mentioned in the last point, to take in new information and be open to those opportunities. Now, I'm not saying don't do your research and don't try to understand the opportunity that's being presented, and I'm not saying every opportunity is a good opportunity, but I'll tell you a funny story. When I was uh, about 26 years old, I had a friend of mine who came to me and said, I need $10,000 or give me $10,000 because I want to use it to invest in this company. And I didn't know anything about investing. I didn't trust the markets. I saw the Dow Jones going up and down. I saw people talking about all the money they lost, yada, yada, yada. And it turns out that this company that he wanted me to invest in was the first company to commercialize the GPS technology. And so had I been open to that opportunity, then I would have put $10,000 towards this company and I would have been a multi-billionaire. Uh, but I didn't because I didn't have that. Now, I'm not saying that everybody goes out and invests in speculative stocks, but I do think there are people that try to give you game along the way and give you good information, give you advice. And not all financial advice is financial advice. Sometimes people may talk to you about going to school. They may talk to you about taking a different job. They may talk to you about getting a different skill. They may talk to you about taking a different approach. They may talk to you about a meeting that you should use to go to. They talk about a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, if it's an opportunity to move you forward, then it'll move you forward. And generally, if one thing starts to move forward, that creates the opportunity for a bunch of other stuff to move forward. So just always be open to those opportunities and never summarily dismiss the opportunity to move forward and be in a better space. Number nine, and just be gentle on yourself. It's easy to go on YouTube, see people like me with videos that talk about getting to a certain place. So you say, this guy's 52 and he retired early. It's easy to get caught up in that and think you're not doing something right. But the fact is you're doing everything right. Um, you just have to 
believe and, and trust the long game because the idea is making sure that when you are 70 and 80 years old that you're still living the life that you want to live because of the decisions that you made today. And if you're, you maybe find yourself in a situation where you're fortunate enough to back those things up, and that's where we were, because I'd spent so many years planning for the future, and I gave up a lot. There were a lot of things I didn't do, a lot of fun I didn't have, a lot of things I didn't buy that uh, I wish, sometimes I wish I would have went back and I would have bought at the time. But those were sacrifices that I made to get to where I am today. Uh, and that helped me push things back. But the idea for me was always, I just didn't want to be 80 years old, 70 years old, and live in this horrible life. So be gentle on yourself. You're, you're going to make mistakes along the way. You're going to do things that don't necessarily fit what you think you might want them to fit. And at the end of the day, because you're doing the right things, you're going to get yourself to the right place. And the right place doesn't necessarily mean you're going to retire at 51. It doesn't mean you're going to be rich. It doesn't mean you're going to be famous. But it's going to put you in the place that it is that you're supposed to be. And the best part about it is you won't be in a place where you're wishing you hadn't done something because you left some of the cards on the table. You want to put everything out there. You don't want to leave anything on the table. You want to make sure that you do everything you can to get where it is that you want to be to do the things you want to do. And if you don't make it, that's fine. But you're going to be a lot further along than the skeptic who sits back and says, well, I'm not going to do anything because nothing works. And if you look around, you see a lot of people like that. So as I close out, thank you for taking time. You could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you're here with me. And if you liked any of the content or you find this content useful, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. But more importantly, share this with your friends. If you're watching this channel, it's because there's something that you want to do different or there's a place that you want to be in your life. And I'm sure that most of your friends probably want to be in the same place or do some of the same things. And when you talk to your friends, you could let them know that, look, Sabado's goal isn't for everybody to retire early. It's for everybody to live their best life. And because retiring early isn't, isn't an aspiration for everybody, but living your best life is. So on that note, uh, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.